Hello, this is Sir Franz Niazi uh, speaking to you about what I envision to be happening in the aftermath of COVID-19. This is not the first aftermath that we will have and certainly not the last one. However, after each pandemic, the world of medical sciences changes dramatically as I'm anticipating will happen this time also. Except today we have much better tools, technology and understanding of how the human body works. We are better able to be creative more than what happened 100 years ago when we faced another pandemic, Spanish flu. By the way, in, in that uh, pandemic, we lost uh, 50 million people out of a population of 1.8 billion. And that will be like losing 200 million people today. But you know, in 1918, we all made a big mistake. Uh, when we had about 20 people, 20 million were dead, we declared pandemic over. We all came out of social distancing. And guess what? We ended up losing another 30 million. Unfortunately, human race is not good at learning from history. And I'm afraid, you know, we may be going to make the same mistake again. And I'm afraid, okay, that this pandemic is not over yet because we are not paying attention to the history of pandemics in the past. But anyway, let me get back to the main topic is that how the new treatment modalities will come out. First, let me share a bit of history with you, which will be very enlightening. We have survived as a species for a very long time without any medicine, without any diagnostics, and without any um, healers. This only a few hundred thousand years ago, uh, as the only sub-tribe of Hymenia, uh, about 4,000 years ago, we developed an Ayurvedic system of medicine, um, followed by, in the Stone Age, herbal medicines. And you know, it was not until 19th century uh, that we understood microbiology and infections. About 200 years ago, we became enamored with chemical drugs. And about four decades ago, we discovered the value of biologics and biological drugs as the recombinant manufacturing became a norm. So we have gone through a, a major transformation in how we, view, how we view the disease and how we treat the disease. I think we have concluded that the treatment lies inside our body and this pharmacy is open 24 seven. Now, if we understand the infections, we can treat them with uh, antibiotics or chemicals. But when you are infected with a strand of DNA, there's no possibility of using any medicine to uh, kill it because there's the thing to kill. It's not even living. The only thing that we can hope for is that our own body's immune system will come up to the challenge and get rid of this DNA fragment. But here's the problem. Okay? If this fragment is very virulent like this coronavirus is, a bigger damage is caused by the cytokine rush that comes in killing the virus. So here's a point, okay, how do we manage infections from very potent viruses? I think we need to work more on uh, drugs that help uh, modulate our immune system. Uh, can we use anti-PDL antibodies to reduce the response? Or maybe perhaps uh, another 
mechanism to increase the response, which is specific to a, a, a genome code. Is the CRISPR technology applicable to creating antibodies? Now, can we also make recombinant antibodies that are identified in the patients who have survived uh, and making them as uh, therapeutic antibodies to treat the virus? But above all, I think the, the concerns that uh, keep rising is that can we develop vaccines which are safe? Our vaccine technology goes back hundreds of years. Okay, and I think it's about time to declare this obsolete. Uh, I think the mRNA vaccines are the uh, only uh, plausible solution to managing pandemics and future crises like this. I understand there are dozens of such vaccines at uh, uh, various stages of clinical trials. And I'm hoping that this, in the aftermath of this pandemic, we'll see the FDA approving the first mRNA vaccine. And that will open up the doors to a variety of new possibilities of treating diseases uh, in the future. Uh, I'm anticipating and I'm hoping that after this big pandemic, the big pharma will uh, take a major uh, turnaround and start focusing more on immune system modulation and continue to work on CRISPR and other technologies to create new solutions. But as the history will bear out some of the biggest inventions and the changes that have come into in the science of medicine have not come from big pharma, they have come from smaller companies. And that trend is now more prevalent than it was 30, 40 years ago. So what I'm projecting is a new wave of small companies who have creative ideas and I'm quite confident they will have very little difficulty in uh, raising the venture funds to bring in the new treatment modalities when to prepare for the next wave of pandemics. I hope not okay. But I always believe that I'm an optimist, I believe that there's something good will come out of it. If only we learn from this pandemic that we have to change the course of what the new medicine should be. I think we may have an opportunity to turn around and handle the next pandemic with great success. Thank you.